Okay, so this has been a long journey for me. I mean, this is a project that's sort of taken sort of 10 years to get to where we are. And I think it's a very exciting project. And I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share this journey with you. Um, and I'm really going to sort of split the time I've got into sort of the why, how, what. Um, and I'm obviously going to start with the why um, and look at, you know, how this journey came about, why, why it came about, how, how we've developed it and, and, and what it's doing now. Um, okay, so the why. Um, I don't know about you, but I mean, as a school leader, I mean, I inherited the system uh, when I took over Berkhamsted uh, School that uh, had appraisal forms pretty much like this. Um, and the, this, this sort of appraisal structure fundamentally was, uh, you know, you filled in a form, you, you set a few targets da -da -da, for the future, and the outcome was that it sort of pretty much ended in a filing cabinet um, where it might have got pulled out for next year just to check the, the targets, but actually in practice usually didn't because appraisal didn't happen very regularly. Uh, there was no real performance management. So one of the things, I, you know, one of the things driving this, one of the whys was, you know, there must be a better way. The second one is that um, as a school leader, I wanted to identify the um, the training needs of um, uh, the organisation. Um, I wanted to be able to see a line uh, appraisal of performance management uh, with the training needs of my organization so that I could actually um, uh, pull together and have a much better idea of what training people really needed, either on an individual basis or as, as for us as a whole as an organization. The third reason was, was really about tracking poor, uh, and tackling um, uh, poor performance. And uh, you know, we've all got the bends of this world in our in our schools, and uh, particularly in the UK, where employment legislation is quite tough. Uh, I mean, you, know, you ended up you know, the bends of this world. They they're, they're pretty bad in the classroom um, in terms of classroom control, pedagogy, ready doing marking, etc. But they they always got good grades. Um, and they did that because the children worked harder to compensate, and and parents paid for private tutors, and uh, and you know the kids had to sort of fill in the gaps. So when you actually look at outcomes, um, Ben's performance was actually no different to to that of um, uh, it was no different to that of any other teachers in the department. Although we knew on a day-to-day -day basis his performance wasn't very good. Um, and then the, 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 the final one was really, you know, using, um, having appraisal as a way of driving um, school improvement. And, you know, this is the journey we've been on in my time at Jess here. Um, and um, it, it's been quite an exciting journey. And this is one of the tools that's driven that journey. And I suppose the, the philosophy behind it is, um, is, is sort of comes from the British cycling team. Um, so Dave Brailsford. And this idea of the aggregation of marginal gains, that if we, if every teacher can do three things better, uh, the accumulative effect on the pupils would be enormous. So three, doing three things better every year was really what we were looking to do and when, we, when we sort of put this process together. And so what, we, what, what the appraisal structure um, does is it, it really looks for three areas that you're going to target in terms of teaching and learning, an IT target, and also identify an area of sharing expertise and best practice within the organization. So that's really, in a sense, the, the essence and the key backbone of it. It's about sort of driving school improvement. Well, how do we get there? Well, I, I very fortunately, um, a number of years ago, went and spent some time with the talent management team at Novartis. Novartis is the biggest, one of the biggest drugs companies in the world, um, and we were dealing, we were working with the team who are advising the team who look after their 400 top people. And this is their appraisal matrix, in, and you'll notice the bonuses there um, in blue. And um, what struck me when I saw this um, appraisal matrix is it didn't just look at outcomes or in school terms results, it actually looked at attitudes and behaviours. And it's, it's these attitudes and behaviours that I thought was particularly attractive. And so obviously we want people who, you know, who are the outstanding performers who can get 
um, and exceed objectives and you know have fantastic attitudes and behaviors and so on but and also get results but that isn't always the case and this this grid the three by three grid actually brings that out I think very clearly and then the way they work is that there's there's a, a proportion of the organization are uh, in need of, of performance they, they work on the basis to quite a lot of strong performance um, and then obviously there's people who are su superior and outstanding performance. so a lot this early work was done when I was uh, principal at Berkhamsted School and we worked with the team there along um, a competency model um, which really falls into three I think rather unthreatening categories that we use here at Jess now of development required uh, Jess practitioner and the lead practitioner and, and we work on a normal distribution curve I suppose around those those roles and um, we've got uh, roughly we're looking you know five to ten percent we would reckon would be um, requiring improvement most of our people would be just practitioners you know sort of they'd be you know fundamentally I suppose outstanding teachers by in sort of Ofsted or ISI terms um, and then we've obviously got people who go beyond that into lead practitioners so we then broke down the tasks that teachers do and we looked at so this is a teaching competent assessment for learning really about whether people do their marking just in, you know and you know development required the, the teacher doesn't do their marking um, doesn't get it back to them that would be development required um, the just practitioner would, would use it in a formative and summative way and the lead practitioner would drive the department pilot new approaches to, to uh, assessment for learning and so on and so what the aim would be is to move people from development required to just practitioner or to move people from just practitioner to a lead practitioner so this would be one one of our you know aims within the in upskilling and improving and driving performance within the organization it's also a particularly useful way of, of catching if you like the bends of this world who who um, who don't do their marking and they actually you know if they, they would fall short on a whole range of areas so initially we developed a whole load of competency grids um, along these lines um, um, and um, around development required um, you know and defining what that means in terms of in this case planning approaches to learning differentiation and challenge and so on um, and then we define the the what that means as an organization and I think this is this is one of the things that the Hable team are going to sort of talk about a bit later on and how you might develop competency grids for your own organization and and, and do that sort of thing yeah, I think it's quite important that as a school we have you have buy-in from the teachers so we actually had teachers defining effectively what it means to be a just practitioner what it means to be a lead practitioner and go beyond that and therefore also defining what what it is to fall short of that standard um, and then those those competencies across the whole thing can be captured into a summary at the end and again the, the aim is to get these targets the three areas of targets that we might want to look at and, and build on as we go through so that was really the um, the, the, the way in which the um, uh, the, the appraisal the theory behind it and some of how the competency grids came in, into being so the appraisal system is simply and this is this is sort of usually old old school version of it and obviously talk about review three six five in a minute so initially they were done on grids using highlighting um, so this is first of all the teacher is self appraises then their line manager goes through and moderates the grid and obviously where there are differences is where there need to be discussions uh, around the whole um, uh, in an actual formal appraisal meeting and then the setting of targets of which areas we're going to work on to improve so fundamentally that's the structure so we then come to what and I suppose what is is, is the, the product itself review 365 so what we are able to do in 365 is to build this into a platform so rather than sitting on um, pieces of paper and 
ultimately ending up in filing cabinets. They actually sit on the, the Review 365 platform. And so, again, the whole process goes through in terms of clicking through and doing a self-appraisal, the grids are there, and you know, whether or not you've met targets and so on. So it's all captured within 365. And the advantage of capturing it within the product and, um, it is, is simply that it allows us to aggregate data. And so um, one of the things that, you know, if you just look at this as a sort of simple feedback I might get as a senior leader that um, we've got 8% you know, of people are lead practitioners, 24%, quite a high percentage might be of requiring improvement. Um, so I might see that this idea of differentiation in the use of data might be a bit of a problem for the organization. Might not just be an individual training need, it's, a, it's an organizational one. So if you take this, you know, this idea that, you know, that um, different, rarely uses data to inform the planning needs, you know, that, if, if that, we might end up with somebody sort of, you know, like filling that in. We might end up, if, it, if one individual fills that in and it sits in a filing cabinet, we don't get aggregated a view of it. But because we can pull the data out of Review 365, we might find that 25 teachers are, are doing that. And that really would be a school training issue rather than an individual need. And so what we've developed in, is using um, Power BI to actually analyze data. And I'm going to come out of the, um, the presentation now and, uh, and click into um, uh, my Power BI uh, for Review 365. So this is actually live data. And the, the advantage of doing this is that I can I can actually, I run three schools, and so I can aggregate the data live to, to actually just analyze my secondary school. Or I can uh, 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 do one of my primary schools and look at the data. At least seven of them have done it at me. So it allows me to look at it and have, as a senior leader, I've got a, an overview of how much, uh, how many people are requiring improvement across my departments here. So in the bottom right hand corner, I've got, you know, a, a, a proportion of students, 6.65 uh, of the Arabic department require improvement um, and 6.18 are uh, lead practitioners. So that's rather good. DT department obviously reckon they're pretty good and they are. So it gives me data which I can, I can dig into. I can actually look at things by whole department if I want to. Um, and that, that's quite a handy thing for a school to be able to, to do. Um, so if I, if I then pop back into the presentation. Um, so, so that is a way of, that's one of the great advantages of collecting data in a central, um, you know, the, we can look at these competencies and we can analyze the competencies and see where we're strong. Uh, here, assessment and data is an area that we need to improve on as a school, and approaches to learning is an area we need to improve on. Um, clearly, we're really good on inclusion, um, and, uh, and that's a, a, a strength of the school. So that's my overview. Um, I think I've done it under budget and done it in 15 minutes, so I hope that's uh, helpful for you and uh, uh, gives you a, an insight into to how this project came about. And uh, I'll hand you back.